All right, so we're going to now discuss the dorsal column uh, pathways. So the dorsal column pathway is also known as the medial lemniscus system. Um, we're going to talk about these pathways according to um, their axons. So um, we have the receptors uh, that use the sensory neuron, which goes into the spinal cord and then moves in a specific way to a point within um, the spinal cord, actually all the way up to the um, thalamus. Um, and then we will see the third one that goes to a specific part of the brain. So uh, these will be labeled as uh, first order, second order, and third order um, fibers or axons. All right, so we'll be discussing them um, like this as we go. So if I can go back to our previous drawing, um, to quickly appreciate how the first orders uh, move, let's just have our spinal cord and we we'll have our central component, and then we're going to have dorsal ganglion. If we have um, sensation, mechano sensation, let's say fine touch, or it could be vibration, it could be proprioception, anything that goes through the dorsal column will do fine touch for now. Um, it, it will go through the receptor uh, for touch, so you have um, mechano distension that will go on then you have action potentials that will go through um, the first order fiber, which is also known as um, the sensory neuron. I just want us to appreciate um, what happens in the um, dorsal horn. Um, so the the dorsal horn upon entering um, of the fibers, uh, you see that these fibers, depending on what type of sensation is going on this side, they will pass through very specific um, layers. And I just want us to talk a little bit more about these layers as we talk about the dorsal horn. Um, Histologically, what you are talking about, if I can bring this out here, you'll be talking about uh, lamin, uh, lamin, laminae that go from 1 through 7. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, um, 6. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, and then you have seven. So you will note that the most superficial of them is one, and then, of course, the deepest being the seventh um, layer. The seventh layer uh, receives afferents from both sides of the body, while the other laminae seem to just receive um, unilaterally. Uh, there are very specific components that I want to uh, pinpoint. For example, uh, before we go into the details, we have three main types of uh, primary afferent fibers uh, that mediate this uh, cutaneous sensation. 
So first of all, you have the the large A uh, beta fibers. Uh, these are highly myelinated, and you see that they transmit impulses that are generated mostly by mechanical stimuli. So you have the highly myelinated. So these are pretty fast. Then uh, you have the small ones. So these ones are not as fast. They're small, but they have myelin. Uh, these are known as A delta. So the A delta uh, fibers, some of them uh, transmit impulses from uh, cold uh, as well as pain receptors. Um, but mostly, of course, they they transmit from mechanical receptors. Uh, last but not least, we have the ones that are not myelinated. So these are the C fibers. So the C fibers are primarily for pain and temperature. So these are slower uh, fibers because of lack of myelin. Uh, so to be very specific, uh, you have the A bitters, uh, the A bitters themselves, you have them going through uh, laminate 3, so once they come through, they go through laminate 3, okay, so you start from 3, 4, 3, 4, Five and six, and then uh, from there, that's when they go to the dorsal component of um, the dorsal component of the spinal cord. So, if I can just flip it so that we have a better perspective of what I'm talking about, if it's coming from the right side you will notice that it will come through. So a bitters, they'll come through from three, they'll go to four, five, six as well, and then move on to um, the dorsal component. All right. Aside that, we also see that the A deltas, which, as I said, are smaller, uh, but are still myelinated, those ones go through, uh, through three, four, and um, five as well. Okay, so A deltas go through three, four and five to be very specific the mechanical part are the ones that take up three whilst uh the nociceptor and cord receptors uh these specifically go through five but when we talk about mechanical receptors we're talking about uh three and four uh, last but not least, the cord receptors, um, uh, I beg your pardon, the, the temperature receptors, nociception, um, that go through the C fibers, you will note that those use the most superficial, which are layers one and two. Um, Nociception through the A deltas could also go through um, layer two. Okay, this is nociception. But what you should know is that the, the nociception, thermoreception that are more slower use uh, the most superficial part. So that is something that I wanted to point out about the first order. But what we want to appreciate here is uh, once they enter the um, once they enter the spinal cord, you will observe that the first thing that they will do is go through these layers 
and then from these layers they'll go to the dorsal column on the unilateral side which is on the same side um, you have these in in two parts there are those uh, that are coming from the lower part all the way up to T6 those ones form a more medial part they are closer to the center so they form this bundle um, going up and this bundle is known as the fasciculus gracilis. So the fasciculus gracilis is, um, it takes up sensation through the dorsal column that is more medial. But as you go up in the upper parts of the body, you will find a more um, lateral uh, type of fiber. So it, it uses the same uh, pathway, but this is, you're talking about the upper part of the body. So the same pathway goes through uh, the same laminae that we're talking about, but as it ascends through the dorsal column, you will notice that it is more lateral uh, than the fasciculus gracilis. So this one is known as the fasciculus cuneatus. Um, so all this is from the neuronal end. It's part of the first order. The first, this has not synapsed on anything. So once it goes up, that is when we're going to see um, the synapses that are going to take place. So let me just clear this so that I show you how the synapsing will be. So I'm just going to start and say we have the spinal cord. You have the central part, okay, and then you have the first orders come in uh, through the layers. They're going to go to the, um, if it is coming from the lower part of the body, they're going to go through more medially. So this is the, going to be the um, fasciculus uh, gracilis. Um, then, as you go up, you're going to find, um, I beg your pardon, you're going to find another component coming from the upper part of the body. So if it's coming from the upper part of the body, what you're going to find is it's going to go a little bit more um, medial, more lateral, okay? so. The gracilis is going to be more medial, going up, ascending, but it's going to meet with the second bundle type, okay? Let's just put our somas. It's going to meet with the second bundle type. So the first bundle type, the one that is in green, is the fasciculus gracilis, and then the one that is in red, still going up, is known as the fasciculus Cuneatus. Um, so after we have this scenario, then what we're going to see is it's going to synapse on um, a group of neurons that are found in the medulla. So I will draw that again, and as I draw, I'm going to explain again. So you have your um, spinal cord, and then another so that I can show both parts and then I'm going to go to um, the medullary area the first one is going to come in and go in a little bit more medially and go up and then you have the second one coming through this one will be more lateral Okay, all these are first orders, but what did we say? The first one is uh, fasciculus, yes, gracilis, and the second one is fasciculus cuneatus. So when they reach the medulla, so this is the medulla area, what you're going to find is they will then synapse, okay? Uh, to synapse is to simply... Uh, stop at. 
they will then stop at a group of neurons okay both of them will be on will stop on their specific neurons so these neurons in the medulla are the ones who have axons that then cross to the other part of the body now remember that all this is happening unilaterally on one side of the body um, so once it reaches uh, the medulla you have now axons of the uh, neurons crossing over and then moving uh, still um, from it says from the gracilis uh, they will move more medially so these are now known as second orders because we now have a second type of uh, fibers that were synapses at moving up then of course uh, from uh, the cuneatus it will also move and then it will move up after crossing again uh, more laterally so these will go they will move up as one bundle um, so this bundle that they form after uh, crossing is known as the medial Lemniscus. All right. It's known as the medial lemniscus, and it's the one that then moves all the way to the thalamus. So when it reaches the thalamus, okay, as a bundle, you'll find that it then synapses within the thalamus on the third type of um, nuclei, and this third type of nuclei now have their axons go to specific parts of the brain. Now, what, what specifically are we talking about? In the thalamus, the synapsing of the second order is on what is known as the ventral posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus, okay? So from there, you have this um, nucleus that they synapsed on having its axons that are now known as third order go to stimulate specific parts of the brain. So things that are worth appreciating is that um, they go through um, the internal capsule and then fan out in the um, fan out to the cerebral uh, cortex. So you have it coming in. To the spinal cord and depending on where it's coming is coming from if it's below t6 you're going to have it more medially if it's above you're going to have it more laterally uh, so the first orders will then synapse in the medulla onto the second orders which will cross they will cross to the other side of the body you know, the other side of the spinal cord and then move up all the way to the thalamus when they reach the thalamus they will uh, synapse on the ventral posterior lateral nuclei and these third orders are the ones that go through the internal capsule all the way to the cerebral cortex for perception. So um, in the next uh, video or maybe just as homework for this time, I'd like you to appreciate what would happen, what sensations in the dorsal column um, would be stopped and where would they be stopped if one we had um, the first lesion uh, happening on A, the second lesion happening on B, and the third one happening on C, just to be uh, more specific, another one happening at D. Um, maybe to just give you uh, a way of explaining this if this was the left side of the body and this was the right side of the body if a, a lesion happened at let's say um, C it means that you will lose feeling on the right side and what type of feeling you want to speak to the feeling or to the sensations of the dorsal column so go with that and see what would happen if that happened on B, on A, and 
and D. Would sensation be um, lost on the right side of the body or on the left side? And just to go through um, what sensations you're talking about, uh, what type of uh, proprioception, temperature, uh, stick to the dorsal column one. All right. So this is what I'm going to say on the dorsal uh, column uh, pathway. Uh, in, the last, in the next video, we'll look at the, um, the anterior lateral pathways. So go through this video again and again until you learn these pathways.